place you live defines many aspects of your life. Uh, can I ask if you have ever moved to a different city or town? Please think about it for a second, and if you have, uh, can you raise your hand to show me your experience? Okay, I see lots of hands up going up. So the majority of people here experience moving to a different city or town, and it's more common to move around these days. Um, my interest in cities and people formed at a young age while growing up in three different cities in multiple countries, Seoul, South Korea, Winnipeg, Canada, Minneapolis, United States. Um, and comparing cities became a habit, and I often thought about how my life would have been very different if I lived without moving. Um, indeed, each of my home's culture, surroundings, and modes of transportation impact my day-to-day -day life. And this experience um, gradually led me to believe that creating good places for people is essential. But what is a good city? Is it a city where flying cars navigate through congestion-free skies like uh, in the movie of Fifth Element? <coughs> the clicker is not working. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, or is it a city where poverty and discrimination are completely eradicated like it was portrayed in the movie of um, Demolition Men? It might be meaningless to define a good city, but one thing for sure is that it is undeniable that people need places to live and fulfill their lives. So cities continuously need to be reimagined and maintained. And I feel like I'm not the only one who's been thinking like this because I've been seeing numerous initiatives uh, of building and rebuilding cities, especially as smart cities, uh, in Eurasia and all around the world. Um, for instance, Copenhagen established Copenhagen Solutions Lab to make cities more sustainable. Um, Singapore has launched its Smart Nation initiative uh, to make cities more livable and make enhance the quality of people's life. Um, Amsterdam is carving its path to make better cities uh, with the Amsterdam Smart City Project. Focusing on mobility and energy efficiency. Tokyo is actively engaged in Tokyo's green growth to promote environment protection. And as a city planner and civil engineer, I'm very happy to see all of these great projects. But today, I really want to focus on one Pacific country uh, that has made remarkable strides in smart city arena, South Korea, my current home. That's the flag of South Korea. Um, South Korea is located uh, between China and Japan and it's the size of Hungary, um, and so it's not so big. But if we zoom in, it looks like that. That's the shape of South Korea. Uh, throughout the last century, uh, South Korea went through various uh, events uh, with periods of colonization and war. In 1910 through 45, South Korea was under Japan, and in 1953, the Korean Peninsula was divided into North and South. But in the 70s and 80s, South Korea made an astonishing economic leap, and now it's recognized as a world-leading ICT powerhouse. It's, that was very quick and easy to talk about South Korea, but how did South Korea um, became a global smart city leader in such a fast time? Because uh, the concept of smart cities became a trend just over a decade ago. And I think South Korea got very lucky uh, with timing. In 1994, um, 
just as the internet was gaining popularity, the government um, initiated internet policy. It's aiming to establish a nationwide high-speed communication networks it, by 2015, and that was accomplished. And this uh, foresight laid the groundwork for what was to come. Another pivotal moment was the simultaneous development of new cities and high-speed information networks, sparking the idea of a new urban model that uses information technology to solve city problems in real time. So years before uh, South, the concept of smart city emerged, South Korea was paving their ways to smart cities. Korea's some early decision made Korea to be head of the game in the smart city market. In fact, before the idea of smart cities emerged, South Korea launched the ubiquitous city, U-City project, um, driven by information and technologies to create a more interconnected urban landscape. This project included deploying CCTV cameras nationwide, um, and these cameras enhanced safety and proved invaluable in solving numerous criminal cases, capturing the movements of suspects at witnesses. South Korea, as a result, earned the reputation as one of the safest places to live. And this was all before the smart city law, which was established in 2018, just five years ago. After its enactment, the government began to take actions more progressively. They not only allocated substantial funds to support smart city projects all over the country, they have revised regulations to accommodate new technologies. South Korea introduced a regulatory sandbox for smart cities, allowing businesses, especially innovative startups, to test new products and services. Busan and Sejong were designated as the national pilot smart, city smart cities, and projects like Sejong 5-1 district and Busan Eco Delta City emerged. Sejong focusing on data-driven solutions, sustainabilities, and economic growth. Busan emphasizing urban regeneration and transportation solutions. So Busan and Sejong, they're located um, and the south in the middle of South Korea. The government did not stop here. They have initiated the Smart City Challenge, where this project aims to create smart hubs to enhance regional competitiveness and promote the growth of smart cities all over South Korea. With a budget of 20 million USD per city, um, over three years, the program has given a boost to smart cities in South Korea. Additionally, city operation centers have been encouraged to use um, integrated platforms and central systems that connect and manage various aspects of urban infrastructure and services. These platforms streamline data collection, analysis, and utilization to um, make overall city operation efficient. And on top of all of these, an event like World Smart City Expo, um, WSE, are annually being held in Korea, a major international event dedicated to discussion and promotion of smart city initiatives. And these are some of the projects from South Korea. Um, as per my story, the right combination of infrastructure, development, and laws have made South Korea, Korean cities renowned smart cities. I'm proud of South Korea's enthusiasm and passion for building, um, building them. And I think if Korea can do it, because Korea was a country that went through periods of colonization and war, other countries can also achieve the same. And what is the next step for South Korea? For years to come, South Korea intends to use data gathered from the pilot cities and the use cases from research and development. 
to expand its smart city projects. Their focus will be primarily be um, reducing energy consumption, promoting green cities, and enhancing the current smart city solutions. Regarding the recent city development, South Korea has begun um, providing autonomous bus services in the city center. Also, they've been building uh, environmentally friendly buildings that looks like the one that's on the left side here with solar panels. And this building actually saves up lots of energy and um, I've heard that it's actually producing energy, so it's making a profit. Furthermore, you should know that the country develops a strategic plan just for smart cities every five years, with the next one being released in 2024. In my presentation, I discuss how South Korea started building smart cities without clearly understanding their objectives. Although they have the technical expertise, they lack defined goals to address critical urban problems such as waste management, traffic, congestion, air pollution, and many other more. As a result, these challenges still persist in South Korean cities. While their progress in building data-driven urban development is evident, more profound innovation is necessary to address some of these urban issues more effectively. It's a well-known fact that the world is facing climate change and urban sustainability threats. However, the solution to climate change crisis does not lie merely in create, building more camera, installing more cameras and sensors. Although smart cities are impressive, and helpful, they represent just one step towards a sustainable urban future. Today, we've all come together here to talk, listen, and learn from one another. But if the climate change continues to persist, one day we might have to deal with some unwanted scenarios, and we might not have chances to talk. Throughout the history, in times of crisis, humans have shown incredible innovation under pressure. It's inspiring and it reminds us to act urgently and unleash our creativity. I truly hope that no one would have to face the worst case scenario of the climate change. So like I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, it might be meaningless to define a good city but because each of us need to need a place to live and fulfill our lives, we all need to maintain and reimagine our cities. Thank you. <laughs>